So now I can simply pull it out, sticking the slots in the cradle here, the pin into the slot, and uh, the bottom of the drill holder on the plate. And if I go all the way down, the drill will fall out. And I can stick another one in from the top or the bottom. Now, now I'm going to push the button in, bring it up, comes into position. Now I'm timed again, axially and radially. Now I can stick it in. There's no problem. I know about where I'm going to hit, right about there. Now, I've set my stock in. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was for the finish on the drill and make sure that my flute lengths are the same. Now pull it out. Perfect finish, perfect geometry. So I got perfect finish, perfect clearance, and a perfect chisel angle. Come back over with the pin down. The slots in the cradle, pin in the groove through the bottom, and I can just repeat this process. In review, I want to identify the parts on the machine that you have to be working with. One of the items is called this locator device. And what it actually is, is it's a slotted device that holds the drill holder in place by putting the pin in and turning it to the left. The other thing that the locator is, is by loosening the two uh, set screws, we can move this scribed mark on the locator to A, B, C. Okay, the next device that we have is the bushing plate and bushing plate holder. All we need to do to release the bushing plate is to pull it back and turn it to the right. On the rim of the device is stamped the, the drill size numbers, for instance, a half an inch, uh, 31 64 and all the way through the range of the drills on the, on the device. Right now we're doing 17 30 seconds, so I bring 17 30 seconds to the top, the bushing is at the bottom, turn my device back and just kind of work it in and you can see the pin come back into the hole. And what that does is we have 17, 30 seconds on the top, the bushing is at the bottom. And when I put the bushing, I mean the drill holder, into the locator in the right position, the drill protrudes through the bushing holder and the bushing. And it should go at least the diameter of the drill. The purpose of the bushing plate and the bushing is so that I, when I take my drill that's in the drill holder and insert it in the bore located in the locator, that my drill point sticks out of the bushing one to one and a half diameters. And that's what holds the drill in place for a perfect grind. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to remove the bushing plate and put another one on. All you do is pull it back turn it to the right. And this three-lobed cam here is spring-loaded. All I have to do is turn it until the bushing plate falls off, and that's it. Now you can see how the three-lobed cam attaches. All I have to do is put, put it over, hold it, and turn that spring-loaded device, rotate my my plate until I get my correct number on top. Make sure that the pin slides in and I'm all set. Then I can just put my drills in and it's held perfectly. What about one and a half diameter sticking out. This uh, micrometer dial setting is called the grind position. If you rotate it to the right, the work head will go up in position or if you go counterclockwise, if, counterclockwise it will go down. If I needed to raise it 10, 10 or 25 thousandths, I would go up. If I needed to go down 25 thousandths, I go to the left. And it's also a calibrated dial that's matched to the charts that are on top of the machine 
or in the workbook. The next setting that we have on the machine is the lift rate. By increasing or decreasing the lift rate, we compensate for the web thickness of the drill. If the, tar if the chart said 24, for instance, right now the number 20 is lined up at 12 o'clock to the pin. If I want to go to 24, I pull it out, turn it to the 24s at 12 o'clock, and the pin goes into 24. This is used to compensate for web thickness. The feed rate dial is used to regulate or control the amount of clearance on a drill. If we decrease the feed rate, we get less clearance. If we increase the feed rate, we get more clearance. Right now I'm on 15. If I wanted to decrease the clearance on the drill, I could go from 15 to 13 or 11 or whatever, whatever the chart says. That's how it works. This wheel is to control bringing the stone into the point. And I'm going to demonstrate right now, by turning clockwise, I am bringing the stone into the drill point. And when I touch, I want to set my stop like this. And by opening up this lock nut here, I can rot my, rotate my stop to uh, approximately 12 o'clock. That always works. And then I can back it off and say I finished grinding that drill. I can put another drill in and I will know that when I get to just about 12 o'clock, she's going to touch. And I can finish my grind like this. Right now I'm grinding without coolant just to demonstrate how this works. Okay, probably the trickiest uh, and most difficult thing to master on this machine is this drill timer loader. It is designed, for instance, to hold the drill and to time the drill actually and radially. This drill holder has a very powerful spring in it and some collets, has a pin on it, and it has the, this slot here and this slot here. The slots have to fit into this yoke, and the pin has to go into this slot, and the bottom of the drill ha holder has to fall onto that plate, so it's very simple. Get, the, get it in the cradle, get the pin in the slot, and there we have it. When I depress this button, when I push it all the way in and push all the way down, I release the spring tension on the collet and the drill falls out. To load one, I just stick it in from the top or the bottom, press the button, and bring it back up to a, that approximate position there, and now I have collapsed the spring against the collet and I'm holding the drill. Now what I have to do is time the drill for the stick out, how far it's going to stick out, because it has to stick out one to one and a half diameters through the bushing plate. And I accomplish that with this uh, rotating barrel device. Right now it's set at one half inch. And I can set that up to 12 o'clock position by loosening the bolt in the middle of the device and rotating the desired barrel up to 12 o'clock. When I have that, then I can take the handle by depressing the button and it will fall into its axial position or how far the drill has to stick out from the holder so that when I take the drill out of here and put it in the machine, the drill sticks out one to one and a half times the diameter of the drill. The other purpose of this device is to time the drill, the cutting lip of the drill radially. And what I want to do, oh, by going backward, that way, uh, and pushing the button going a little bit, I collapse the collet so that I can move the drill. And what I want to do is I want my cutter to be perpendicular. The cutter itself, that's the cutting edge of the drill, should be perpendicular. Right now I'm not. 
That is something you do it a couple, three hundred times and you'll, you'll understand exactly what that means. But this device, I'm going to run through it one more time. Take the holder with the pin down. Do it like that. Put the pin in the slot. Make sure the bottom is on. And when I push the button and go all the way down, I could take the drill out and I could put another one in. When I come back up to that position, I lock the drill in place by going backward and pushing the button a little bit, I can move, I can regulate the movement of that drill. And I have it in position. Now I have it located uh, actually or how far it's going to stick out. And I also have the cutter timed so that the cutter is straight up and down. So that when I take the device and I move it over into the workhead, sticking the pen into the locator slot and we walk around here and we can see that the drill is sticking out approximately one and a half diameters so that when we grind I'll turn the wheel on when we grind I know that I'm going to be able to do it and that's it okay this is the uh, simplest and easiest dressing procedure for the Winslow HC grinder. I have a stylus on the end of this arm and it rides on this cam and attached to the arm is a diamond tipped stylus that protrudes from the holder approximately 5 sixteenths of an inch to 3 eighths of an inch. With I will turn the wheel on. With the wheel on, I want the stylus against the face of the cam, and I'm going to hold it there, and I'm going to slowly feed the wheel until I get, well, just about touching that wheel with the diamond. Now, you notice I'm moving the, moving the arm up and down the cam right here. I'm just moving it because I don't want to knock that diamond out of that holder. I just want to get to where I'm touching, and you'll hear it on the mic. There, that was a little light. That's okay. But I'm going to do it a little louder so that you can actually hear it. There, you heard it. Okay? Now, I went up and down. Now, I'm going to put... I made sure, I did it a couple heavy ones there, I made sure uh, that the wheel is dressed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back that stone up on my hand wheel about two degrees, which will give me maybe about 2,000 stress, and I'm going to put my thumb on the top of the cam holding the arm firmly but not real powerful just firmly and I'm going to bring it up as slow and as smooth as I possibly can now this is something that you won't learn to do overnight but after you did this about ah, 10 times or so you'll get the hang of it because if you move that stylus I'm going to do it just one more time a little lighter on the, on the stone there now I'm going a little faster, I'm pulling. I am not uh, tugging on that arm, I'm just simply putting all my force on my thumb and drawing it up. I'm keeping the arm out, now I'm gonna just back that wheel out of the way so I don't accidentally knock out the diamond or damage the dress. And I get my wheel back into its relative position, turn my wheel off, Close my cover.